Hello everybody, thank you for tuning into the Forgotten Film Channel. Today's Forgotten Film star is Eleanor Audley. Eleanor Audley was born on November the 19th, 1905 in Newark, New Jersey. In approximately the year of 1917, her family had moved to Manhattan. She graduated from Hunter College High School in 1924. She made her debut on the Broadway stage in 1926. had a very distinctive and prominent voice. In the 1940s, she began working on radio. She worked exclusively on the most popular radio serials of the day. Her first appearance on film was in 1949. That was in the exploitation movie, The Story of Molly X. In 1950, she voiced the role of Lady Tremaine in the Disney classic, Cinderella. And not only was she Lady Tremaine's voice, the Disney animators used her facial features and expressions when they designed the character. And they did exactly the same thing in 1959 when she voiced the character of Maleficent in Sleeping Beauty. In 1954, she began working on television. And from 1956 all the way through the 1970s, she became a very familiar face. She, was, she played supporting roles in mysteries, dramas, comedies, and some of these roles actually became memorable, ongoing characters. Disneyland was opened. It was her voice that was chosen to be Madame Leota in the Haunted Mansion. The same with Disney World. And you can still hear that voice to this day. In 1959, she was stricken with tuberculosis. And while this didn't hold her back, she continued to work. It did cause her to have respiratory problems for the rest of her life. And in 1970, she retired. She lived a quiet, uneventful life until her death on November the 25th, 1991, at the age of 86 of respiratory failure. During her 44-year career in the entertainment industry, Eleanor Audley was in eight Broadway plays. She voiced characters in 16 radio serials. She performed in 35 different movies and she made 160 appearances in 89 different television shows. And what we have for you today is an ongoing role that she played in the television series, The Beverly Hillbillies. She was Millicent Schuyler Potts, the headmistress of Potts Academy. That was the school that Jethro attended. Uh, I just want to thank you for tuning into the Forgotten Film Channel. You have a great day, and I hope that tomorrow is even better for you. Hey, everybody, look what I got. Uncle G, I'm pretty. Anyway, we got a letter from Mom. <laughs> What's your story yelling about? Sounds like he said we got a letter from Mom. What's all the commotion? Ellie says Jethro says Pearl sent us a letter. A letter of what? Did you hear what? No, but I bet you it's Kitten. Oh, the kittens. Pearl's always trying to give away kittens. Well, there y'all are. Where's the kittens, Jethro? What kittens? Didn't your mom send us some kittens? Just a minute. <laughs> no, just a letter. Jethro, how could you think that kittens would... Well, come on, sit down. Let's hear what Pearl's got to say. Dear son and kinfolk, I take pen in hand to say we are all fine back here. How are you all out there? Just fine, Pearl. That's right. <laughs> Jethro, I hope you are making good marks in school out there. Ma thinks I'm going to school. Are you in the fifth grade like you would be here? <laughs> Doggy Jethro, I clean forgot about putting you in school. We're going to have to get you started today. Can I go too? 
Well, no, I think Miss Hathaway's got plans to put you in some girl's school. Can I go, too? <laughs> That's what I just said. It was a girl's school. That's why I want to go. I like girls. <laughs> I don't. Well, let's finish with a letter. After that, we'll take care of school. Your sister, Jethreen, had a narrow escape. A city dude tried to take advantage of her. What does that mean, Paul? Well, that, uh... Well, Granny will explain that to you later. Tell us more about the city dude, Destro. His name is Jasper He. Jasper He? That's a funny name. Oh, there's a dot in there. <laughs> uh, his name is Jasper. Uh, he wears patent leather shoes and spats on them. Don't sound too neat, does he? <laughs> he seen your sister at the cabin when I went there to keep an eye on it for Cousin Jed. I know what Pearl went there to keep an eye on. Uh, Mr. Brewster. Yeah, well, now, Granny, Pearl's a widow woman. She got a right to look. I ain't knocking it. I got my eyes open myself. <laughs> at first, I thought the city dude worked for Mr. Brewster. So I drove back out to the cabin to give him a piece of my mind. I could put a bug in that Mr. Brewster's ear. Look out for feathers. Feathers? The more Pearl has her eye on a man, the more feathers she sticks in her hat. <laughs> That's right. Three and eight came in flowing 2,000 barrels a day. And it looks like the new strike's gonna be even better. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. This is one of the richest pools we've ever hit. Yep, everything from here is good news. Uh, well, not everything. I, I'll call you back. <laughs> Mrs. Bodine, this is a pleasant surprise. Well, thank you. Although you might not think it's so pleasant when you hear what I have to say. Oh? One of them oil fellas working for you has made advances to my daughter. Made advances? Well, what would you call being picked up and carried off by brute force? Well, I'd call that making advances. Uh, what's his name? Jasper Depew. Jasper Depew. I, I, I ain't seen him myself, but from what Jeff Green tells me, he's a pretty slick article. Uh. Oh, Mr. Brewster. You don't know how hard it is for two girls living alone like Jeff Green and me. You see, my son Jethro's in California with Cousin Jed, leaving us no man to protect us. I'm a widow woman, you know. <laughs> but I guess wherever you have two unattached girls living alone, there's bound to be trouble. Especially when the girls are the kind that men call lookers. <laughs> Did you say his name is Depew? Uh, Jasper Depew. Calls himself Jasbo. Oh, Jeff Green says he's a flashy dresser and a fancy talker and drives a sporty car. Regular big city dude. <laughs> I guess uh, Jeff Green's kind of like me when it comes to tall, handsome city fellas. I'm just potty in their hands. <laughs> nope, no one by that name working for OK Oil. You mind if I look? Oh, well, no, go right ahead. Uh, I'm bound and determined to find the rascal that trifled with the affections of my sweet, innocent, helpless baby girl. Ma! Jeff Green, I thought I told you to stay in the buggy. I seen Jasper to Pew coming. Here? Yes, sir. Oh, well, thank goodness we got Mr. Brewster to protect us. Oh, there he is! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Brewster throwed his arms around me and helped me in his strong embrace. What's an embrace, Paul? Well, yeah, that's when folks kind of twine their arms around one another. You mean like wrestling? It's sort of like wrestling, except uh, they ain't mad. It's like wrestling for fun. <laughs> yeah, I reckon you could see that. <laughs> then we heard a knock on the door, and we knowed it was Jasper Heath. Better look for that dot again. Oh, yeah. We know it was Jasper. Uh, he was there to get Jethreen. Her beauty had set his heart to burning with flaming desire. What's flaming desire, Paul? Well, uh, Granny will explain that to you later. Well, I'll try. You're sure counting a heap on my memory. <laughs> Read on 
with your ma's letter there, Jethro. Yeah, it's getting good. One city fellow's got his arms around Aunt Pearl, and another's waiting at the door to grab Cousin Jethro. <laughs> my only thought was to save my daughter. So I tore loose from Mr. Brewster's embrace. <laughs> I saw Jeff Reen heading for the door, so I quick throwed myself betwixt my child and danger. But sweet innocent Jeff Reen, not knowing better, let that rascal in. He went right to sweet talking in a voice smoother than fresh churn butter. Hello again, you great big beautiful lump of sugar. I brought you something all the way from Eureka Springs. Genuine orchids growed in a hot house. And this lovely young girl must be your sister. I'm her ma. No. Yeah. Well, for Jethreen's beautiful mother, a little gift of genuine French imported perfume all the way from Paris, France. Oh, well, you, you had an order. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> genuine Paris, France perfume. Look at that French writing on there. That says, Ah, dear amour. That means, oh, love. Ain't he a sport, Ma? Mr. Jethreen has got herself a steady fella now. He says he is going to ask for her hand someday. I hope he will take the rest of her, too. Ha, uh ha. -huh. <laughs> Give my love to all and be a good boy. I am going out now to mail this letter and get some more feathers for my hat. Ha, uh ha. -huh. <laughs> As ever, your loving mother. It's sure nice good to hear good. from Ma. Uh -huh. Nice here. Yes, Ro. You and me has got to go right out and find a school and get you to go. Granny, you pack up a nice lunch for Jethro to tote along. How about a big mess of poke greens and chitlins with some pole and a big pot of sorghum to dip it in? Fine. Oh, Granny, it don't have to be that fancy. Some of the other boys here in Beverly Hills might not have it so good. They're going to complain it to their folks. Let them complain. It ain't going to hurt none to raise their standard a little. <laughs> I'll get the truck up to Jethro. Paul, please let me go with Jethro. I can help him fight if the big kids in the fifth grade goes to picking on him. I know for sure that Miss Hathaway has got other plans for your schooling. But with Jethro gone, I won't have nobody to play with. Oh, yes, he will. I just remembered something. Mr. Drysdale's stepson is coming home for Thanksgiving. And he's going to be living right next door. And you can play with him. Mr. Drysdale, give me some pictures of him. Here's the pictures of Sonny, that's what they call him, Sonny. He's been going to a lot of schools, and he ought to know some real good games to play. Ain't he something? Yeah, but what? <laughs> School, all right. Millicent, Skyler, and Potts. I reckon them three is the teachers. <laughs> three teachers? Must be awful big school. I'll say. Well, let's go in and get you started. a most disreputable-looking vehicle outside my window. Well, what's the, what's the, these gentlemen? Oh? <laughs> yes? What is it you wish? Well, I'd like to get my nephew started into school. Here? Yeah, here's all right if you've got room for a desk and his lunch basket. <laughs> my dear man. This is a most exclusive private school. The tuition is quite expensive. Well beyond your means, I'm sure. Does that mean it costs a lot of money? That is precisely what it means. Well, I can pay you if it ain't over 25 million. <laughs> 25 million? Yes, ma'am, that's all I got. Dollars? Yes, ma'am. In cash? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> This is obviously a practical joke perpetrated by one of my envious competitors. What is your name? Uh, Jed Clampett, ma'am, and this here... Uh... And you expect me to believe that you have $25 million? Well, no, not on me, ma'am, but uh, <laughs> my neighbor, Mr. Drysdale, he's keeping it in his bank for me. Uh. <laughs> Get 
Get me Melbourne Drysdale at the Commerce Bank. You see, it just so happens that Mr. Drysdale holds the mortgage on this school, so we are very well acquainted. Hello. I'd like to speak to you. Now, if you wish to admit that this is a hoax and be on your way, we will forget the entire incident. Otherwise, you may be liable to some sort of action for invasion of private property and impersonating a millionaire. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale is coming on the line now. Thank you. This is your last chance, Mr. Clampett. My next call will be to the police. <laughs> Very well. Mr. Drysdale, Millicent Schuyler Potts here. Come in, come in, come in, come in. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Diana, tea for these gentlemen. Crumpet? Oh, no, ma'am. Clamp it. <laughs> tea, Diana. Use the spode, tea set. Well, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Just the two of us, Ellie Mae and Granny, didn't come. <laughs> yes, well, do make yourselves come. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale's exact words to me were, uh, Oh, well, never mind his exact words. <laughs> Apparently, he values your friendship greatly, and Mr. Drysdale is a very important mortgage. A uh, man. <laughs> well, now then, shall we talk about your youngster who's entering our fifth grade? What is his name? Jethro Bodine. Bodine? Jethro. A uh, no man. Jethro Bodine. <laughs> we always put the last name first. Now, male, of course. Uh, yes, ma'am. Just got a letter this morning. <laughs> Date of birth? Uh, December the 4th. Year? Uh, no, ma'am. Back home. We only been here a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps you should answer the questions for our vital statistics. Now, we need to know the complete birth date, which in turn gives us the exact age. Now, we have December 4th. And judging from the fact that your nephew is entering the fifth grade, I would surmise that the year is, um, 51 or 52. Am I correct? Oh, Jethro ain't near that old. <laughs> and in the fifth grade? Why, that's wonderful. Well, perhaps we have a budding genius on our hands. <laughs> Archer! Now, poor. Oh, Diana, I'd like you to bring me one of our boys' uniforms to show these gentlemen. A fifth grade size. No, no, on second thought, you'd better make it third grade. He's younger than average. <laughs> we require that all of our students wear identical uniforms. It makes for less friction that way. Otherwise, the boys of millionaires are apt to be taunted by the really rich. I bet you Jethro will look right good in a uniform. He can't wait to be a soldier. <laughs> yes, many a young lad is like that. However, our uniforms do not reflect any militaristic design. No, rather, we strive for something gay, attractive, and smart. Oh, there you are. Charming, isn't it? Now, you take this home and have Jethro wear it when he comes to school in the morning. <laughs> Wear this? Free Granny will have to make considerable changes in this before it'll fit Jethro. So tiny? Yeah. And in the fifth grade? Well, the boy must be a genius. Well, you may be very sure that we will bring him out. Where is this? you bust out. Now then, how do you gentlemen like your tea? Um, we don't know, ma'am. We ain't tasted it yet. <laughs> Oh, you are the fun-loving one, aren't you? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Granny, here's Jethro's school clothes. You want me to help let them out? Oh, well, thank you, Ellie, but let's see what has to be done. Maybe they fit them already. That's supposed to be a hat? I reckon so. What's that? Well, Jethro said it stands for Potts. Potts? That's the school he's going to. Pot school. Well, he'll be learning a good trade. If there's something folks all his needs, it's Potts. <laughs> Jethro can make you some dandy new ones once he catches on to it. Who in the Sam Hill is supposed to wear that? Well, Jethro, I reckon. 
Jethro couldn't have wore that at three. Paul said it to take some letting out. Letting out? There ain't enough seams in the whole world to let that out. How's it going, Granny? Are you getting my uniform already? Jethro Bodine? No, I'm Granny. Over to school, it's Bodine Jethro. Let me, Leave the room. You got no shame running around here in your underpants? Granny, these ain't underpants. They swimming trunks. You wrap that towel around you before I cut a switch. But Granny, Miss Hathaway says... I don't care who says what. I'll be glad when your mom gets out here to take you in hand and to make you some school clothes. These things ain't never gonna fit. But Granny, I gotta have these in the morning. It's a rule. All us kids over there's got to wear these. And that coat, too. Yeah. I sure wish your ma was here with her sewing machine. Girls are whiz at making clothes. Now that you're going to be keeping company with Jazz Bo Depew, you're going to need some nice clothes. I like the little fella, ma. I'm glad, Jeff. But you got to stop picking him up all the time. He ain't heavy. <laughs> that ain't the point. It don't look fitting for a girl to run around carrying a fella. All right. I won't pick him up anymore. Till we get married. Why would you pick him up then? To carry him over the threshold. <laughs> you ain't supposed to carry him. He's supposed to carry... No, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I declare, I don't know how I'm going to keep you in clothes the way you're shooting up. I start a new outfit, and by the time I get it stitched together, you've outgrowed it. My new shoes is already too tight for my feet. Oh, them feet. <laughs> if they get any bigger, you're going to have to go outside to turn around. <laughs> my feet ain't as big as Jethro's. Well, of course not. He's a boy. Just think, your brother Jethro's going to school in Beverly Hills, California. Yeah. I'm homesick for to see him, Ma. Me too, Jethro. I'll bet your rich Uncle Jed has Jethro duded up like one of them actors in movie pictures. <laughs> Dang, if Jethro ain't right. Every time that music plays, somebody comes to the door. <laughs> Good morning. Surprise! Surprise! Yeah, good morning, Miss Potts. Uh, I decided to come by and drive our diminutive genius to school myself. Uh, what? Your nephew, Jethro. Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Jethro! Come on down here. You got to ride to school. Well, that's mighty nice of you, ma'am. Oh, tut, tut, tut. I'm going to give the boy my personal special attention. I feel that when one... Well, howdy there, Miss Potts. <laughs> you come to take me to school? Yeah, bet you she is. I want you to be a good boy and make good marks so you all be proud of you. This is your nephew. Ma'am, you met him yesterday, remember? Of course, he does look a mite different in his uniform. <laughs> Granny had a time getting it to fit, but she done it. You are in the fifth. Oh, yes, ma'am. Just finished three years in the fourth. <laughs> but I can't. It's impossible. Oh, that ain't nothing. He got through the first grade in only two years. <laughs> Under no circumstances can I allow this. Well, say, here comes Mr. Drysdale. I reckon he's coming to see Jethro off to school. Uh, well... Uh, uh, come along, Jethro. Uh, but take off. This is the way we go to school. This is the way we go to school. Is Jethro's lunch? Oh, Jethro, you forgot your lunch. Now, uh, Jethro, you share your grits and fat back with Miss Potts today. <laughs>